this is for digital divide and digital inequality. So what is digital divide and digital inequality? Digital divide is the division between those having access to computers and internet on a regular basis or not having access to the internet or computers on a regular basis. Whereas digital inequality is having the computers, the internet access, the infrastructure, but lacking the knowledge or the understanding and maybe even lacking infrastructure on how to use them on a regular basis. I'll move on to my first year of teaching, which was in 2010. I taught in a very rural area where there was only about 35 students in a school. It was located about an hour away from Las Vegas, but it was still part of Clark County School District, which is the fifth largest in the nation. Um, I was hired part way through the year, um, just in uh, the very beginning of November, um, as a second and third grade teacher. Um, I was hired as a third teacher out there before there was only two. Um, I was put into basically a permanent portable um, that didn't have anything in the room except for a whiteboard and one teacher computer with the desks. Um, about a week later they found an overhead projector for me um, that I had to do all my presenting on and writing um, to show the whole class. Um, and then a few weeks after that, so probably by January, I had computers from the technology department brought in for my students. Um, there's only 35 students in the school again and so when these computers were brought out to me we had um, more than a one-to-one -one ratio of students to computers throughout the school. Um, this was only because we were completely Title I and all of the Title I funds had paid for all of the computers that we had. Now they didn't all work the best but we had the computers, um, but because we were out and we were so rural, um, we didn't get a very fast internet connection. We actually couldn't have all of the programs um, to use that we were supposed to use because we were so far out and didn't have the, the internet connection that we needed to. Um, and because of that, there was no chance of even getting wireless internet out there and we had nothing to use for wireless internet. Um, when the students were using some of the laptops that we had, they had to plug them into um, the the walls for through the Ethernet cords. Um, but the students didn't know anything different because only about four of them had computers that were in their own homes or trailers. Um, the three of us teachers, we were very comfortable with technology that we were given, um, but we would have also liked to have had more. And as you can see in the picture below, that is an actual picture of the school. Um, and one of the portables that's there was mine. My next year of teaching, I was moved to a suburb of Las Vegas. I was in a very affluent school. We had about 750 kids and about 80 computers for them to use, plus a computer for each teacher, with some of the teachers also having the ability to have a laptop. About half the teachers had smart boards, and the school was in the process of getting more um, smart boards for the next years. Um, some teachers had the eye clickers, um, and some had Promethean boards that were donated to them specifically. Um, because it was one of the more affluent schools, and there was such a tremendous use of technology, we were actually selected by the district to receive more technology um, on the district's behalf and have the National Department of Education for Technology come and see how we were able to use the technology in our school. We had wireless internet that every teacher was connected to um, along with about 100 iPod touches that were available to be checked out um, by any teacher for any reason. It was a dual language school so we had apps on there for learning Spanish, uh, learning English, um, we had extra specials uh, for science and so they were very well used. Most of the teachers are able to use the technology that was there and at that school we actually had a technology specialist that would come around and help the teachers become more acquainted, become more with their technology, to learn more, she was willing to help and as 
she would walk around if she saw that students were using computers for word processing and things she would go and help the students and help them to understand more that was the ideal setting for having technology in the school from there I was moved to the inner city of Las Vegas where I currently teach we have about 700 students with 90 computers for students to use and a few laptops for teacher use. We currently don't have wireless internet, but it should be being installed right now during the summertime when there's no school. We do have 10 iPads that were purchased with Title I funds in previous years, but there was never any money allotted for buying the apps. And so anything that we get is a trial version or some of the free apps that have to be app based because we don't have that internet uh, infrastructure for the wireless yet. Um, being that there is no wireless internet, I am the teacher in charge of them, so I have to bring them home to update them, make sure that the iPads are up to date, make sure that all the apps are up to date, um, which can be a problem for some teachers when they want to use them and then I have to take them every so often to update them. We do have some of our teachers at the school that are using technology in their everyday lessons and, and are able to find innovative ways to do that. But then we have some teachers at the school as well who don't even like to touch a computer and if they had their way they wouldn't have computers at all. Um, as stated in my, way, my, in my welcome video, I have been selected to go to trainings and um, put on by the district in order to come back to my school and train the teachers there. Because of this, and teachers knowing this now, um, they actually come to me and about two other teachers to help them fix their problems with the technology in their classrooms. This is a prime example of digital inequality. You have extremely low socioeconomic areas that receive extreme amounts of money through Title I funds and they are able to purchase more to help those students. You have the very affluent areas where parents provide funding to the schools in order to, for them to purchase technology to use in the classrooms. But then you have the schools that are in the middle that don't fall into a Title I category or the affluent category and are those, school, those are the schools that lack the advances. After reading about the digital divide and digital inequality throughout the world, it really made it even clearer to me to think about the digital inequality at each of our school settings. Then when we add in the students and their home lives into the same equation, it becomes even harder to expect our students to use technology at home for, home, for schoolwork and homework. From the readings, I took some of the statistics and created a survey for friends on social media since all of the schools are out here until August. After looking at their answers, it has become very apparent to me that we as Americans have a huge misconception about technology, computers, internet access, and who is able to access it, and how to access it. So how do we fix the problem? I think in order to fix the problem in the schools, we first have to educate the teachers to make sure they are comfortable using computers and technology. If teachers are not able to use the technology, how are they able to teach their students how to properly use computers or do internet research? Which leads to the second one of educating students on how to use technology. Then, we need to make sure that although some schools have more money to purchase equipment through Title I funds or other things, that these middle schools are not forgotten. Lastly, we need to educate the parents on how to use the technology. We have to show them what their students are expected to do and hold parents to that same accountability at, to some degree. The principal that we have currently at my school actually takes the, te the, the parents on one of the nights that we have to be there and she has them do part of the testing that the students are required to do on the computers so that the parents understand what it is like to use the computers in order to answer the questions. I've given examples of three schools that I have taught at and gave their technology breakdown. 
but I know of other secondary schools that serve about 1,500 students, and those students there are able to check out iPads um, to each of the students as long as their parents sign it out. It seems as though as a district we are trying to combat some of the problems that we've talked about in the digital divide and digital inequality. And after reading about the socioeconomics in digital divide, it becomes examples, it becomes very apparent that our district is playing into this. The schools with low socioeconomic status are getting more money to purchase um, things to help their students, the iPads, they're getting more programs, they have more money to buy more books, um, they offer tutoring on the computers, they are able to um, send tutors out into the community. Some of the more affluent schools are able to purchase items because their par the, the parents give them the money, but that is yet again leaving the middle class out, which is causing some of that digital inequality again. They aren't receiving anything through the Title I funding. The families aren't considered affluent enough to go out and make the purchases um, for home like some of the affluent, affluent families might be able to. And so is this only creating more of a digital inequality? As with any population of people, there will always be some kind of divide or some kind of inequality. Some of the things that we have to fight and combat at our school um, specifically are students who don't have the understanding and the knowledge of how computers work. With the new Common Core State Standards that we've adopted recently and all the high stakes testing that is done on the computers, our students are not able to do that. Um, because many of these don't understand the basic programs on a computer, the teachers then have to go and spend their time um, teaching them how to use a computer, um, using the shortcuts for copying and pasting, how to click and drag. They're taking their time on this when they could be teaching the standards. Um, we do have a computer lab, but not all of the equipment works properly because we can't afford to buy more equipment. It makes it m difficult when more than one class wants to go in and use the lab. Um, as a school, we've also recently started a newsletter online, which helps to bring some money in our, into our schools. But because the newsletter is online through the company that we use, not all of our parents are completely informed like they had previously been. So as a teacher, it becomes necessary for us to recognize um, the inequalities and the divide that may exist within our schools and within our classroom populations. But these limitations can't prevent us from teaching. We have to push our students, make it so that we expose our students to the technology. We have to do our best and create equal environments for our students as we can. We have to be willing to help those that are seeking the help and in our communities, finding ways to help and finding solutions for our students that don't have access at home. If we can help our students find those ways in the community, that is part of our job is helping them to best serve them. Here's a list of all of the references that I actually read through to help me understand the digital t divide and the digital inequality and to um, create this. Thank you for watching and listening.